Here I'll show you how to run a macro when a user changes a specific cell within a worksheet, a range of cells, or any cell within the worksheet. So we're going to cover all three scenarios. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, so first things first, let's cover when a user changes anything within the worksheet, and then we're going to narrow it down to a specific cell by the end. So we go to the VBA window by doing Alt F11. And what we're going to do here is instead of going to the normal insert module, which is what we do for almost every macro, what you want to do here is to double click the worksheet where you want this macro to run, where you want something to happen when a user changes a cell. You're going to see a window open up like this. And in the left hand menu, if this is not doesn't look like this, by the way, it might not be full screen. It might just look like this, but it's the same window. I just made it full screen. So then we go to the left section here where it's going to say general by default. Click the drop down arrow, click worksheet. And by default, it's going to be worksheet selection change, which means that whatever is in here will run every time you select something in the workbook. That's not what we want. Don't worry about it. Go to the right hand drop down over here. And these are all the options we have. And every one of these options, it's an event. It means that when something in Excel happens, we're going to run a macro. And this allows you to determine what event would run the macro. So before we delete, before we double click, right click, calculate, change, and so on. And what we want here is change. So click that, and then we have this little section, worksheet, worksheet change. Let's go ahead and delete the selection change. We don't need that. I'm going to go ahead and remove the extra space. And now, in here, any time we change something in the worksheet, a macro will run. So let's just do a little message box. Hi there. And let's test it out. Hit Alt F11 to go back to the worksheet. Now I can select it. Nothing happens. Double click. Hit Escape. Nothing happens. Double click. Enter something happens. It essentially thinks it changed, even though to us nothing changed. So notice that even if we don't input anything, it's going to do this. And we have our macro that ran, little message box, hi there. So when we type something in, it runs the macro. But we can still select everything and do all of that. Now let's see what happens when we select the cell and hit the delete button. Well, the worksheet has changed. So you don't just have to activate the cell for that to happen. Now, as it currently stands, it doesn't matter what cell we do something with. It is going to run the macro. So let's go ahead and make it run on a specific cell. I'm going to highlight the cell here just so it is easier for you to find when you download the workbook. So we'll work with cell A1. So Alt F11. Double click the worksheet that you're working with. And now it is time to limit when this is going to run. What we have here, which helps us out tremendously, it's so cool, is this up here. What this does is in the target variable, it creates a variable, a target variable that stores what was changed. So we can now figure out what cell was changed. So if I do something like this, target dot address. It's pretty cool. Let's go back to the worksheet. Let's type in here or double click in here and hit enter. A1. So we get the location of the cell that was changed. Go back to the VBA window, Alt F11. And now you can start to see how we're going to limit this so it only works on certain cells. Now what I'm going to do, examples, is to leave that in there and comment it out so that you can play around with it. Leave another one in here, just the hi there one. So uncomment that, remove that little single quote if you want to run that one. And now let us begin to limit it using the target variable. If target dot 
address equals. Now let's figure out the range. We want to do it with a1 range a1 dot address. Then now let's go down here and if. So now we have, I'm going to select this and hit the tab key to push it in. We have surrounded the code we'd like to run with an if statement. This if statement uses target.address, the same thing we just output, and it checks to see if it's equal to, well, the address of cell A1. And we can put whatever cell we want in here, A1, B2, C3, whatever you want. Now let's go back to the worksheet, check it out, I go down here, nothing, down here, nothing, up here, and it runs. How cool is that? It's that simple. So now we have a macro that will run only when we do something with cell A1. Let's go ahead and add a comment. And now let us let us create a section of code that's going to run when we change any one of a number of cells. So let's go over here and let's say A3 to A5. Let's put that as yellow. This will be our range and we want to run it if we change any cell in here. But we don't want to make a bunch of if statements that say if it's A1, or if it's A3, if it's A4, if it's A5. You don't want to do that. That is just very annoying. So we're going to use an if statement but it's going to be a little bit different this time. Let me add some space. It's going to seem a little confusing. Let me just type it out first. If not intersect target, target, you know, it's the cell that was changed. And now we want to do a range. But here we can type in the range, so a th the, the full range, so we don't have to type in a single cell. So A3 to, let's say, what was that, A5, close parentheses for the intersect, and then is nothing, <laughs> then, okay. Now, and if, let's output a message box, changed, my range. Let's make sure this works now. Alt F11. We're out here. Enter. Nothing. Nothing. Now let's go in here. Changed my range. But the other box did not run. Now let's go up here and run this one. Hi there. But this time the range one did not run. So perfect. Exactly what we want. Now let's talk about it. This right here is logically speaking a lot more confusing than this up here. <laughs> but we need to use this because what we're doing using the intersect function is to see if this right here, or you can see when you type a comma, you have lots of arguments that you could put here as ranges. You want to see if it intersects with this target here. So basically it's saying, do these guys overlap? Yes or no? And the way to check for this within an if statement, to check if it did overlap, we can't just reference this directly, is we have to do this kind of double negative thing. So we first check if it is nothing. So it's kind of like if it didn't return a result, kind of. And then we put a not in front of it to negate that and reverse it. I have never been good at explaining this. All you need to know is that if you want to check if a user is going to work with a range, do something, change a range of cells, you use this format. Copy it, paste it, forget it. That's how I look at this because it just works. It's easy peasy. And in a moment, I'll show you how to pull this part of it out. So how to pull out, gosh, I hate this editor for code how to pull, sorry, how to pull this range out so that you can change it at the top instead of having to go in here and mess with this stuff.
and this section of code up here if you want it to run when a single cell is changed. Now, let's say that you're building larger macros and you don't want to put everything in here. You want to have, or you've already got them, other macros in your modules. So, sub another macro. I'm another macro. So let's say you wanted to call another macro from over here. That is easy to do. Let me comment that out. Run a macro that is located inside of a module. All we have to do, well, there's two ways to do it, but I like to do it this way. Type the word call and then another macro. So the name of the macro, let's test it out. Delete this value. I'm another macro. So it's really, really easy. Sometimes people get stuck on that. That's all you have to do. And if we could delete the call, yes, and I could do that and it would run the macro. But I do like to keep call in there. Just helps me to remember that we are calling another macro. So I like to keep it in there. So if you want to run a macro, locate another module, just do that. And that way you can keep your code a bit more organized. Now before I go, I want to show you how to pull, as I mentioned a little earlier, how to pull this dude out of here. So you're not hard coding the ranges into these if statements. So what we can do up here, we'll do two things. First, we shall declare some variables. So let's say cell to change. And we want to set that as a range because we want to store it as a cell reference, basically. Dim range to change. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set these variables, cell to change and range to change, equal to a range. Each one's equal to a range. One is equal to a single cell range, and one is a multi-cell range. Now, to set it equal to a range, which is an object, we have to use the word set. If I was setting it to text or numbers, I do not have to put this word in front of it. So set cell to change equals to range A1. And now we can go down here, copy cell to change, put it right here. We still need the dot address at the end of it, and you will notice if we were typing it out, so let me delete this cell to change. The second I hit the dot, you're going to have a bunch of options. Start typing address, and it fills it in for you once you hit the tab key like that. We do the same thing for the next one. Set range to change equal to range A3 to A5. Copy that. Go down here and delete that, put it in there, and we do not need address in this case. So now it's very easy. All we have to do is change this up here and this right here. We don't have to mess with these if statements. We can leave this annoying little part alone and never have to look at it again. Just change this up here if you want to change that. So let's go back to the worksheet and make sure everything works. Text. I'm another macro, more, change my ranged stuff here. And if I do this, nothing. Okay, it automatically filled in the yellow, very annoying, undo. But it doesn't run when I change any cells, any other cells. So Alt F11 to go back here, that's all there is. These are the two ways to make it so that a macro is going to run if a user changes something in a cell or changes something in a range, or also, I guess the third way, if they change anything within the worksheet in the cells. This is how you can call other macros so you don't have to have all your code in here. And this is also how you can make the macro a bit more robust and a bit better for the long term so it's easier to manage by breaking out the range references up here into separate variables. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.